to get some of the other benefits down the line, like to be able to work in a community service program or to be able to get into some of our educational programs you have that completed the RSAC program. And first, I think going to the RSAC program for that reason, this is just a good time for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have no choice but to take a look at what can bring you back to situations like these. The whole program taught me how to adjust and like to think better and just I don't know, I'm very thankful for the whole program. I got into the shock program. I said, you know what? Getting locked up saved my life. After a very long history of connecting with the Bronx School, kind of share what's on this previously, um, did a technical assistance project in about 2000 to come in and look at what was right, what was not right, what was working, make some of my suggestions for improvements. And part of the suggestion at that time was to redesign the program from a clinically specific individual to the program. A community member progresses through this program in various stages. Initially, there's the orientation phase where for two months they'll have lesser privileges, they'll be wearing the traditional jumpsuit. They'll get basic substance abuse education, basic cognitive skills, and orientation to what it means to live in a therapeutic community and what their responsibility for committing to that community is. With the prep you have uh, basic needs. You have the opportunity to talk. You have the opportunity to We don't have the opportunity to select that when we want to. Uh, basically, they're assigned to cell, and you're in there studying the practice, and when they enter the unit, they might be a little shell shocked. They might say, I don't, I don't like this. Thing. Mm -hmm. I just did 20 years upstate. You're not going to tell me how to cut my corner, or how I'm going to eat my food, or when I'm going to go to sleep. I walked in, and then they told me like all the things I need to do. They gave me the packet, and then I'm reading the rules of the packet. They're like, Yeah, you got to memorize this, you got to live this, breathe this, taste this, all that. And like, I went in my cell, and I was just thinking, I'm like, Am I gonna really do this? Every day kept going by and I'm like, yeah, I'm waking up earlier than I usually do and I'm doing this and doing that. All the stuff that I don't do in other units and I'm not liking it. But it's really there to sharpen me and make me a better person. The military um, and structure phase of the uh, program is designed to get you to care about yourself, to pay attention to the detail of every day, uh, whether it be um, you know, taking care of yourself, um, to the way you dress, to the, your uniform in the program. And it goes into your subconscious without you even being aware of it. After two months in the program, the community member will be reviewed by an officer and a human service clinician. And then they'll be able to advance to the main stage of the program. Once you're a shock member, and you have those shirts, and you feel somewhat like a human being, no longer in I feel like two months that you go through that prep period, it kind of makes you feel like you accomplished something to mm -hmm. graduate to the shock program. And then when you get close to the graduation, it gets like even more, like you don't just have, I'm gonna go to the hole or anything, you have a lot more riding on it. It makes you feel like a 
a person, not an inmate. The thing with the stock program is you have to earn everything. You don't get your jeans and your button-down shirt until you know your packet. You don't get those good jobs and be out of your cell more and more unless you're doing the right thing all the time. In here, it's, it is like a community, so if someone's having a hard time, you'll see several inmates go over and talk to them to help them, encourage them. Peer support is really what institutes the change here. We'll teach skills for change in our different classes here, cognitive skills, life skills, anger management, things like that. But um, the real practice and of these skills takes place in the community here. It's a positive attitude in here. Um, other, other parts of the jail, there's a lot of negativity. In here, it's more positive, more uplifting. There's, there's a sense of mutual respect between the inmates and the, uh, the officers. I ended up becoming a leader at the end, and uh, we worked with the staff, and we had like meetings with the staff and officers on how everything was being run, so everything would run smoothly. And if somebody was having a problem, we tried to like. There was always somebody else that, if a counselor couldn't get to the person, or there was other inmates that actually cared. I mean, I have kids that are outside right now that did the program with me that come visit me at work and talk to me when they have problems and everything. The one guy just got off the fishing boat and he was almost relapsing and he came and talked to me and he said it was important and I came out of work and I talked to him and it kind of put him in a different direction. I tell you, the counselors, I can't say enough about them. They care about you as a person. We talk about a lot of things that you kind of put down and try to avoid with drugs or acting on or whatever the case may be. You just get really deep, and for me, the best part was the one on one counseling. I let it all out, I put everything out on the table, and I start feeling better. I've always gotten the same routine when I come to places like this. I'm always working on my side where I felt, you know, I could start feeling terrible about myself, but I never did any inside work. Which always led me, I think, to that to the drug use or the violence.
there are also a couple of benefits of people helping each other because they're staff members as well as the corporate captain because the people that are there for the first two months. I needed to go to the program and humble myself because I think doing the program saved me after that from getting into a lot of trouble that I could have and usually would have gotten in trouble with because now when the situation occurs, I think back at the tools and, and the things we went over and they just kept pounding and pounding into your head. So now I know how to deal with these situations like that. It's just kind of second nature. We offer elective groups for community members that might need extra attention in certain areas. So we've established elective classes that include anger management, mindfulness-based emotional intelligence, uh, meditation class. We have parenting groups. As I left, I, when you said, how good is the program, I said to Roger Allen, the mindful meditation, the anger management, and the recovery and relapse that were all optional. I said, those are three things that you, and here I am now being hard correctional. You know, I'm a convict saying, give them more. What's really required also in a therapeutic community is to have a very recognizable rational authority that can utilize program principles to intervene and support problems when they do arise and they they're always going to arise this is primarily the role of an officer in here and an officer can use program principles like our five steps of decision making to intervene and help a community member get through some of the rough spots and help change behaviors. So the rational authority that falls on the shoulders of the officer here really demonstrates the ability to um, hold an inmate accountable and to change the inmate, which we now call a community member, from that sense of being a victim and changing him out of that victim stance to a stance of accountability. Staff that people have sent here to ask punishment, not for our punishment, and, and our job when they get here is to do our best to send them out a little bit better than they were when we got them. The biggest difference I noticed is uh, basically the way you handle uh, inmates. It's completely different in other units, you know, if you have an inmate that uh, has an issue, uh, you know, here you try and be more respectful, uh, try and help them out, uh, lead them in the right direction rather than just kind of, uh, you know, send them on their own way. The guards are actually very, uh, a lot of people don't like them, but they made a difference too. It was that discipline, but I mean, I they bring you to the side after they yell at you or something, and they'd be like, I'm only doing this to try to help you out. I'm not trying to make you mad or, you know, get in mm -hmm. a fight or anything, but I'm trying to really, like, they actually care about, and it's different in other places in the jail. I mean, the other guards in the jail are doing their job, but they don't have that one-on-one -on -one interaction. In this unit, you know, you actually go over there and talk to them, you know, as a human being or a person. So just the little things like that, you know, can help uh, somebody or anybody, you know, uh, maybe make their day a little better or, you know, think clearly. Wanting to work in the unit is, is a huge uh, factor.
They have different counselors for each thing, and they come sit you down and talk to you about what you want to do when you get out and how you feel. If you feel like you need to go to a sober house or drug counseling or anything, and they sent me up with my papers to see parole and probation too, so I wasn't clueless when I came outside. It's different than um, Suboxone and Methadone because those, those medications um, mimic the opiates. Um, they're partial agonists, so they mimic that. The Vivitrol is a blocker, so they're not going to get any little bit of that high that they would necessarily off of Methadone or um, Suboxone. It's a monthly shot. They don't have to take something every single day. The dangers of that can be that you know, if somebody were to use on you know, use an opiate, um, there is a chance that they could overdose if they're using and using because they're not going to get that high and they're not going to get that um, buzz that they would. So that, that can be a struggle and that, that has to be explained to them and they have to be a good candidate for that. With the Vivitrol, there are certain requirements. They don't just come in for a monthly shot. They have to be um, coming in weekly, getting drug screens, seeing an outpatient therapist, um, and they do have to have their medical care there as well because they want to make sure that they're getting the best possible treatment.
we had a guy, I remember he was an ad sec, making fun of the program. And then guess what? He came into the program. And now he's graduated, and now he's out doing the TPW work on, on the streets with no shackles, nothing. He's working. Would you see that happen? No. But I think the structure, the discipline, and the organization got him in the right direction. Him himself said, you know, I wouldn't think I'd be doing this.